the areas where we feel most discomfort can be the areas of our greatest growth. In 2017, I became president of the Institute and I was the first person from a black, Asian and visible minority ethnic group to become president of any legal professional membership body in the United Kingdom. Um, and in 2020, I was appointed an honorary Queen's Council for making a major contribution to the legal profession um, outside the law courts. And I was the first chartered legal executive to be given that honour and I'm still the first, so I'm waiting for others to join me. I started off as a legal secretary and it was the best thing that I could have done even though I didn't realise it was the best thing at the time. And the reason why it was so good for me is because I worked for solicitors, legal executives, article clerks at the time within that small firm in King's Bench Walk that I started working at. And every single thing that any of those that I did work for did I knew about. I typed the letters, I typed the attendance notes, I took in and absorbed how they used the law, how they used case law, how they instructed counsel, how they discussed things and considered the law and how they achieved good outcomes. I don't think I could ever have done that any other way and I could do that without having the responsibility of having to know it before. I was studying at the same time, so it made good sense of my studies and I was able to make sense of what I was doing because of what I was studying. So the transition from secretary to um, president is really significant, partly because secretaries were considered only to be able to do typing. So I'm a Silex companion, which is um, an honour that Silex has awarded because of my contribution towards promoting the Silex route into law. And I do what I can through that to promote the Silex route into law for those who are interested in law and also to encourage not just members of Silex but other lawyers and aspiring lawyers just to encourage them to to persevere and to keep going. And also the Silex Foundation, which is a charity, awards a number of bursaries and scholarships each year. And a certain number of them are awarded in my name. So there are Millicent Grant scholarships and they are awarded to underrepresented groups who have had challenging financial or life circumstances just to give them extra support and to help them to qualify and to be alongside them while they qualify, but more importantly, to help them financially. Um, he was my mother's brother and the phot photograph was always on the wall. And I always remember when being asked what I wanted to be when I grow up saying, I want to be a barrister because my uncle is a barrister. Seeing the image there and probably hearing my mum speak about him and what he had done gave me that aspiration that I could work in law too. When he was working in Nigeria, he actually was involved in a significant case that later changed English law or British law. And as a result, he was invited to the Houses of Parliament to speak to the law lords. And I think it's ironic that decades later, I too attended before a House of Lords Constitutional Committee, talking to them, advocating for more diversity in the judiciary. For me, there are two pivotal moments, but both of the same nature. And I've been the work that I've been doing has been made redundant twice and I say the role has been made redundant because I feel that mentally I must realise that I'm not being made redundant, I still have a purpose. The first redundancy was when I was working in private practice and that happened as a result of 
economic circumstances and our main client took away the work that I was doing from the firm and there was no other work for, for me in the firm so the role was made redundant. As a result of that, I actually shifted from private practice to public practice, working in the public sector for a local authority. That was quite a difficult change because the working practices were completely different. And, um, but in retrospect, it was one of the best things that happened to me. During that time, I did very many different areas of law. And because of the skills that I had acquired over the previous years, I was able to jump in and run very quickly. I started off doing um, commercial litigation, I did contract work, I did inter-local authority litigation, which I would never have been given if I had stayed in private practice. But most importantly, there were two areas of law that were very significant for me. One was employment law. I'd always wanted to do employment law, but at, my pre at the firm that I'd worked at and been made redundant from, nobody walked in through the door with an employment law problem. But I ended up doing employment law in the public sector for eight years. As often happens in the public sector as a result of a restructure, I was then made redundant. The work was then made redundant again. And then I started working independently as a consultant and started my own business. And that indirectly led to my Silex route. So those are two pivotal moments around the same kind of event that have really helped to get me where I am today. It's me at Westminster Hall and I'm holding a red leather envelope that contains the letters patent confirming my appointment as an honorary QC. So far, I'm the only legal executive that's received that honour. And for me to receive that honour, given my work history and everything like that, is really significant for me. And um, I received that honour for the work that I did outside the courts that was deemed to have significantly contributed to the development of law in England and Wales. I think it's very important to have very good basic legal skills. And the reason I'm saying that is because the experiences I've just told you about have enabled me to jump in and run and to navigate my career through all the things that I've faced. And by jump in and run, I mean to do work in different areas of law. So the good basic skills are good research skills, knowing how to apply the law, where to find the law, how to apply it, and having very good practice and procedural skills and knowledge, knowing how to use the rules, read the rules, developing confidence, knowing how to learn how to do things through working with college, colleagues, looking at files, looking up um, case law and things like that to develop confidence. And also what I've discovered is that managers prefer you to ask questions when you're not sure rather than just to muddle through because they have confidence that they know that you're less likely to go wrong if you recognise when you don't know anything or you need to ask for advice and you ask for it and you get good advice. So those are the skills that I think um, people coming into the profession and the next generation will need. What's missing and I'd like to see more of is more public legal education and assistance. Because over the years, places like law centres, citizens advice bureaus have had to reduce their service, they've had reduced funding and what I've observed is that members of the public don't know where to get the help they need, they can't access it or understand it if they do access it. So I think that's something that um, needs to improve. Only a certain amount can be done on a pro bono basis because of the amount that needs doing. 
but actually pro bono work is valuable and that can be done in many ways through a firm, through a charity, or you can just do that on a one-to-one -one basis if you're able to do that.